that like this kind of uh, the winter. Yes, yes, yes. Ronald, can you hear us? I've got too much sun either. Yes, now I can. Okay. Perfect. So that you know how to do it now and you know how to turn it off if you need to, but I can hear you perfectly. And how can you guys hear me? Right, am I okay? Okay, because that's how people who join remotely will sound. Sensitive. So can you still hear me, Rono? I can hear you really well, Mike. Can you still hear me? I can hear you well, Mike. So, I think most of the mics are muted right now, too. They are. It's just that one's the only one. Okay. So, so we shouldn't swear on them. <laughs> uh, if the moment calls for it, <laughs> it will. It will. So, okay, great, Rono. That, that'll work. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, Dave. Hi. We're getting all set up and we'll turn our cameras on in the room soon, but you're, you're looking good. You're sounding good. Well, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I have to rename myself as I okay. do a resume session. Okay. I just wanted to say welcome. Yeah, that didn't go well. Let's try that again. Oops. Yeah. So, 
How many commissioners will be Zooming in and how many will be in person? If anybody uh, knows, they can just uh, use your microphone. So I see Karen and me. It's about half and half, Davis. Okay. Yes, it kind of went from you, but you're on Zoom, like you didn't want to unmute it when you're talking. And then it does pick up kind of rustling in the background noise, so we can actively speak to get her to keep it with the red light. Okay, Reese, yeah, Rachel, so Barbara, right on me. It's the red light, and then uh, that, and it will turn green light. Yeah. Who else? Sam. Sam will be here in person. There's David. Hi, Hi David. Hey. How are you doing? Hey, very well. I see you're coming in from your uh, office also at yep. home. Looks like, <laughs> according to Deborah, we're going to be split about 50 50 between oh, yeah. Zoom That's and in person. <laughs> oh, morning, sweet. Andy. Muted. Hey. There's Tom. He's in his office. I see that. Morning, Tom. Oh. You're muted, Tom, but I, I, I think I read your lips. So good morning to you. I'm happy to be here early in the morning. <laughs> I care. Okay. Um, so the audio is pretty good. 
Uh, these are additional microphones. The red means that it's muted, and then if you push the button, it'll turn green, which means that the microphone will basically can't start. We don't need a few of them to be picked up. That's good. That might forget. Yeah, <laughs> you should still be able to hear you even if you don't, but we should have a couple of them on. And then they do pick up movement and rustling of papers. So that's why we need them. Yeah, yeah, lots of that. <laughs> <laughs> Make it really easy for you. <laughs> Okay. Let me see. Who did I say I'm not back to Dan? Well, we've been, you know, Dan and Barbara. Good. Good. Thanksgiving plans? Um, yeah, please. <laughs> My wife's aunt. We're thinking about coming down, but there's the great. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, Got that. Yeah. See, why she has a very name on it. Oh, yeah. There's the vision of the garage. So she's not sure. How about that? A couple of days. I'm going to be in the place. Yeah. 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 Um, and not only that, her crew is partly breaking and she's going to go over on the last day. And we all decided that she didn't really have any changes. But then we went to her. And realized with that day, we have to change her. So that's the place where we write it. Yeah. Did you tell them? Did they ask us? No. Yeah. I think there's a little blame on both sides, but it would be nice if they had, you know, sent them. No, no. Why were the signs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, I know. I can't wear it once the last is on. That's what's happening with me. Generally, I was reading your material last night. And that. And this one, which I think is the last mm -hmm. sample that we have, uh -huh. which you and I put together. And, right here, right here. and you did such a great job on the research of all that stuff. I was retreating and I was like, man, I forgot about how good this was. And all the stuff you got. It was so so it was yeah. 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 So this is going to be a word in order to launch our new website. I didn't realize that it was supposed to be a word. I think that I thought most of it was in my business. And I didn't realize until yesterday. We're waiting for one more person. Thank you very much for your patience. Well, and a month ago, we were going to have a month ago. Were you there? Yeah. So I just, I was, how are you doing this? Okay. Oh, yeah. And when did you start? Which month? I know it's March. March? March. Oh, Thank it's you. only a month. That's pretty darn good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm walking around with kids. I've lost a family. I've lost a family. Well, I showed you something that never had a face. I showed you something that never had a face. I showed you something that never had a face. I showed you something that never had a face. I showed you something that never had a face. I showed you something that never had a face. I showed you something that never had a face. I showed you something that never had a face. I showed you something that never had a face. Well, and you're a little late here, so I'm not late. No, no. I, oh, I didn't say you. Yeah. Oh, always. Please, this is math. Misunderstanding. I will project. <laughs> it will be hard. We're in a show anyway. I have to project anyway. Wow. No, I think this is good. All right, being mindful of everyone's time. Even though we're absent one commissioner, yes. um, I think we should get started. So, first item of the first item on the agenda is the call to order. Uh, so, I will call and uh, please, please say you're here. David Cahill. Here. Thank you. Andy Elkin. 
Here. And David Cahill said yes, just to yes. tell the recording so. Reese Boxen. Here. Tom Hauser. Here. Paul Hedenridge. Here. Harvey McKenzie. Here. Fred Engbart. Here. Karen Schneider. Here. Sam Mulford. Well, we do not see yet. Rachel Parker. Here. And I'm here. Okay, that's 10 to 1. That's pretty good. Uh, pursuant to California Code Section 54953, all votes during this teleconference meeting shall be taken by roll call. I'm not sure we're going to be having any rolls, uh, any votes except to adjourn. Um, public appearances. Any members of the public here who wish to make a comment? Give it a little bit of time. Okay. Hearing none, we will move to the major portion of the presentation. Diane Sashwell is with us to um, help us through our commission training. Welcome, Diane. Hello, thank you. Um, and, so, just, and, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, no, but, but we have seen Diane. Diane has helped us with our reimagining plan. She helped us last year with our, with our training. We have a new commissioner whom you have not met, I believe, Diane. So no. I wanted to make sure that that, uh, that uh, Commissioner Engard knows that you um, have worked with us before. And we felt that uh, since, since you were um, very instrumental in the reimagining plan, that this would be a perfect time to walk us through the, um, walk us through the training as well as we pursue the plan. Okay. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll speak to both sides the, on, on ground and uh, Zoom. The on ground has post-its. If the Zoom can pretend that you have post-its, either bring up, write something on a piece of paper because we have post large paper that we're gonna be adding to. Um, so I don't know what's most comfortable. Do we have the chat? We don't have the, okay. So if there is some way you can communicate with me, it would be appreciated. Um, and I'm looking at you. I don't know if you can see me. So um, I just want to kind of go over some ground rules. This is going to be a global, very high level uh, conversation. We're not going to drill down into a lot of detail. It's sort of an overview. And with that said, one of our pages is things I want to learn more about. So with your post-its, you can write down if something comes to mind and you want to learn more about it, make that notation because at the end, I'm going to take everybody's thoughts and redo a summary and send it to Anne and Deborah so that you'll have everybody's thoughts and then at the end, we are going to have a conversation, which I hope you all participate in. Um, we are going to take little breaks. So that'll be an opportunity for people to post or you want to email me, whatever works best. Um, the other piece is, I just want to speak real briefly about the reimagining process for those that um, didn't participate. We, as you all know, we started doing a strategic plan. COVID happened. We had to stop, we regrouped. So we created um, a different process where we had Zoom meetings that were uh, well attended. We did one-on-one -on -one interviews that were extremely successful. Staff did a tremendous job reaching out to stakeholders very, unique people that um, are, hadn't been participating before. So we were able to get a lot of good information. The reimagining plan is different from a strategic plan because the reimagining plan can be evolving. It can also be something that the staff can change. It's not cast in concrete so that the what we used to know is goals, it's a little broader so that uh, if anything else should happen and you know we're anticipating a drought 
Um, who knows what's going to happen with COVID? Um, there's there's so many things now that can change. There's been fires. So having the reimagining plan, it allows that flexibility. So today, you know, we're wearing masks. Tomorrow, we may wear goggles. You know, we just don't know. So I think it's important to understand that that document is one that allows the flexibility, which is why the commission plays an important role with the budget that there is flexibility when you're looking over the budget so that the staff can make those changes as the world changes. Um, I'm also gonna do debriefs after each one of the sections and sort of go over, give examples, get clarity. But I really hope you utilize the post-its or notes so that we can fill this area up. We have agenda building is one topic, so that if there's something specific, I know that you're doing a more in-depth financial discussion. So that would be an agenda building concept. If you're hearing something and you think, oh, I'd like to hear more about that at a commission meeting, make that suggestion. Then we have a messaging board, and at the end, Deborah's going to spend more time talking about more specific the advocacy and how the commissioners can create a message. And we're going to be creating messages that get placed on there. And then I always have a random thoughts. If something pops up, don't hesitate, you know, to to write something down, to fill it up. If you have a question. And then things I want to learn more about. And then I just have a blank one for something that, you know, I haven't thought of a, a section. We'll put it there. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Anne and Erica. Oh, Barbara. Yes, I'm sorry. Just, just preliminarily, since this is kind of a really weird setup, <laughs> I thought more people were going to be here in person. Most of the people are on Zoom. We can see them. We, they probably can't see yes, us. Okay. If you look up in our little square up at the top, where it says library administration, wait. They can see us. Yeah, wait, they wait, they can see you. And it's a bigger box on there. So the oh, they can see you. Okay, where, where is that? Where are we? Right there at the top of the top. Where the yellow, see the yellow? Oh, yeah. Okay. And for the people at home, that would be their only box on their screen, so it would be bigger. So it's a little weird because in terms of the recording and, and the individuals that are on camera, and then we are because we're here. I don't know. It's just strange. <laughs> Thank you. But, <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think, you know, throughout the day, you know, get more comfortable. Because um, you can see where I am. I'm waving my arm. Right. So Thank they you. can see us. But the most important thing is, the microphone when you talk, make sure that it's green. And they are very, very sensitive mics. Right. I can go all the way over to where Reese is and leave this here, and it still hears me. Right. And I would hope anybody that's on Zoom would do something so that we know that you can't hear or there's something that you would like to see um, so that you know we'll just communicate a little differently. Well, what I was kind of thinking also, if somebody tuned in, they can tell that David K. Hill's here, Tom Kowser's here. They can't tell Rachel's here, for example, because we're little figures on that one camera. It's just, I'm making a point. Okay. <laughs> it's, I thought it would be maybe one or two people at home, and then we would all be here. So, And this is a recording. This is our permanent record, right? So I don't know. It's just... I don't know what I'm I, I think, you know, legitimately, we did take role, and that's that will be recorded, and that's critical. And so, um, point taken, Reese. Next time we do this, we might want to bring our, our tablets or our computers because what I'm noticing is Erica is one of the screens up there, mm -hmm. and her name is there, but I'm sure her picture could be there. So, she, yeah. 
opens up. So, so, so she's here. Next time, time it might be well, advisable to bring that, and then we can individually be up there for you, Barbara. And, and just for clarification, staff is doing a presentation, so they had to zoom I, in. I realize that, but, but at that's the same a good time. Point. It yeah. So solve Barbara's issue. So there are two. Excuse me, uh, Rachel. I think whether or not the protocol we should follow is identifying ourselves as a sort of speak suit. It is a tangible spring. But here, it's obviously in our Zoomers feed right. because it comes through that category mm -hmm. of the frame lights up. But for us here, perhaps we should identify ourselves so that it's frightening. Right. Okay. And also following the agenda. But I will, I will write that and put it under random thoughts. So Anne and Erica. And just as a reminder, No, 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 no. That is not that is not directed specifically at you, Commissioner Foxman. Okay. Commissioner but I was told that when I walked in the room, so I wanted to make sure everybody knows that. Uh, Commissioner Elkind, did you have a question? Well, I just uh, wanted to say that with the conversation that was going on, I could hear some of you very well and some not so well. So if you have a microphone, please uh, use it. The folks who are remote, I can I can hear all of them very clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have to turn these on? So I'm going to do a quick lesson. If you have a mic and it's red, it says push and it'll turn green. But if you're not speaking, it's a good idea to leave it in the red mode. But if you just push the mic, it, it'll show green. Well, everything I said was not recorded. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because sure um, was. Deborah's was on. Yeah. It's, you know, I could stand where Reese is and still be heard. They're very, very sensitive. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, quite our All righty. Uh, before I get started, Commissioner Ingbarth, I believe you had your hand up as well. Yes, um, I'm wondering if you, if um, it's possible to enable chat for us to be able to type in our um, comments uh, for the um, um, the various boards that you have set up. Jen. I just sent an email to all the commissioners with the items that are listed on the wall telling them they can email their comments to me or you. So they have it in their email now. One and these agenda building messaging board. Thank you. And also, we had a discussion about the enabling chat, and it it is enabled for these meetings right now. Um, but I'll add that to the random thoughts. And yes, you can also. Thank you. Raise your hand anytime, and we'll get to you on that. Uh, Commissioner Schneider. Yes, I'd like to second the recommendation to enable chat for for the whiteboarding and communications functions. You can enable chat without enabling private chat if that is the concern. I all right, we, we will look into that and I will go ahead and start uh, talking about our reimagining plan. Um, so as Diane mentioned, we had started a strategic planning process and um, then COVID hit and we had to uh, put that aside for a number of months. And then we have to stop. eventually we came back to that and um, reimagined the whole process. So, so um, okay. And as what we discussed before, we started. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then just the. Oh. This is Janice Stone. Oh. Peter might be on. Mm -hmm. Does it need to be on mute? Because we need to change the bandwidth. Sorry. Sorry for that interruption, folks online. Um, so uh, we began with a commission retreat and talked about the process and, and the goals for, for the entire um, exercise. 
we met with the OMT, the operations management team, we had a similar uh, day long conversation about uh, where we are and where we would like to be. Um, this, this was our original strategic planning process. We had a meeting for branch managers. We started doing staff focus groups and patron open houses at all of the locations. We had uh, paper surveys and online survey. And then about halfway through that process, um, we ran into fires and floods and poor air quality and power outages and the pandemic and high unemployment rates in the county, widespread anxiety. So at that point, we backed up and we, we reconsidered our original strategic plan in the form of a reimagining plan as, as Diane described. So we started with an all staff listening session. We did a bilingual stakeholder listening session, three bilingual public listening sessions, online and paper surveys, a team survey that garnered over 400 uh, responses, and the one-on-one -on -one interviews that Diane mentioned. These were conducted with 95 identified community leaders and had a lot of very detailed input. So all of that was combined to provide uh, the, the, the results that we gathered from that were synthesized and we developed uh, some very high level uh, goals that, that are definitely were identified as priorities within the community. The first was to provide opportunities for all to learn, contribute, interact, and participate. To support community resiliency, it's very important for citizens of Sonoma County. You know, we've been challenged with so many different environmental uh, disasters and, and other things that have caused disruption within the community that, that people are very focused on resiliency. And we're also very focused on fostering racial equity, social justice, and inclusion for everyone within the county. So looking at those individual high level um, goals, we can set forward some, some ways that we can uh, respond to those. So under providing opportunities for all to learn, contribute, interact, and participate, we hope to empower youth development and lifelong learning, embody a culture of creativity for quality of life, expand technology, connectivity, and information access, consider capital and facility needs in the context of the evolving needs of the community. Under supporting community resiliency, our goals are to build community connections through outreach. Very important that we are not a silo within the community. Along that line, strengthen our community partnerships for collaborative services. Advanced climate action. This, this was kind of a surprise in the results that people feel very strongly about climate action. And, and you can see that as a result of the things that we have um, suffered within this, within this county over the last few years. Under racial equity, social justice, and inclusion, we plan to offer bilingual and culturally competent services and resources. We want to work toward becoming an anti-racist organization. This is something that's very important to all of us here, that we, that we recognize uh, the, the dis, dis function, the dysfunction, the dis, I don't know what the word is, that, that, that there are issues to be addressed here and, and we're going to continue to work on that. So those are the high level goals and how we get to there. I'm going to turn that part over to Deputy Director Tabo and she will talk about what we're doing in this first year. Stop. Okay, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Well, let me share my screen. All right, the yeah. Okay, so um 
um, when I arrived at Sonoma County Library, um, and they tasked me with uh, finding, you know, actions that we could take as a result of, you know, to, um, to, you know, meet the goals of our reimagining plan. And so I, I realized that before, you know, the staff had this very intensive session to talk about what specific actions we could do. And, you know, I looked at that list and I kind of prioritized it into what I think we could accomplish uh, in the first year and then things that I thought needed further planning and development. And this is what we came up with. <coughs> okay, so with the idea in mind, this is one of the kind of, you know, basic tenets of my leadership style is what is one thing we can do today to improve uh, our programs and services. So in the first uh, theme that we have, empowering youth development and lifelong learning, we have these two uh, goals of offering high quality experiences for teens and volunteer and commission roles. And, uh, and, and so for part of this, we are appointing teen lab members. We've currently done that for Roanoke Park and Sonoma Valley. We do have, um, you know, we do have to improve in that and appoint lab members for our other branches. We also want to increase the impact of our student one card and our educator card. Uh, so right now, all school districts in Sonoma County are signed up for the student one card. We are um, conducting outreach to teachers to increase the impact of the student one card for their students. Under expanding technology and connectivity and information access, we've actually accomplished in this area probably the most significant work that we've done so far. So we had our video box that was launched in October and it is touring branches. We are expanding our Chromebook hotspot lending and broadband access. Uh, we received two grants actually, um, one for the, um, for the IMLS to expand our Chromebook lending. We also applied for another grant that, you know, that will allow us to purchase 100 Chromebooks that we can distribute through the video bus. We also, this past week, um, as you read in Director Hammond's email on Friday, we applied for another grant for our second video bus through the California State Library. And, you know, we're hoping, uh, you know, we're hoping to make that an electric vehicle. Um, that was one of the things that, you know, we identified as well. We're hopeful to get that money. I mean, that's a matching grant program. So 30% uh, of the funds have to come from us and then the rest of the funds would come from the California State Library. So we targeted this funding to purchase more laptops. We are purchasing 12 portable broadband routers, broadband routers with grant funds for Sonoma High. And this is also a recent program. Uh, we are redesigning our website. Uh, the prototype will be available in January, and we had a, a demonstration of the website in one of our management team meetings. We're also looking at alternative service models and ways to pro provide service to our, mo our more remote areas of the county as well as high traffic areas. And these include things like- um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have my hand up because I can't chat. I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you, Erica. I'm on a good system with a mic. I don't know if other folks are having the same problem. Same problem. Same, same problem. problem. Oh. Boost your mic, Erica. Um, well, can you hear me now? Yes. That's think, much better. Okay. I think Please you really need to project. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, and um, I really. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, so we also are looking at these alternate service models, including book vending machines and kiosks, as well as lockers. So we're, we're looking at a variety of different ways that we can provide service to our high traffic and more remote locations around the county. And that also includes the, the second Biblio bus as well. Um, under the context of our capital and facility needs, uh, we are, you know, steadily working on our uh, facilities master plan. At this point, I believe we've received all of our ADA assessments as well as our facility condition assessment reports. 
So we should be, and we've had meetings with uh, the labs, with the staff, and we'll be having more stakeholder meetings soon. And the tours have all been done. So we, I think last week was our last day for, for, the, for the facility tours. And we're still gathering some input. Um, the, the community surveys, our last day for that is the 24th. So once we have all those surveys, uh, group four is gonna review all that feedback and you know, put it together in a plan for us. Um, we're also looking at um, our automated materials handling unit. This is our, um, this is our machine that's uh, here in HQ that, you know, that we use to deliver the library materials to the branches. We're looking at other locations for a second um, unit. And we're also uh, looking at landscape projects to incorporate features that invite usage. So right now, Cloverdale, uh, as Commissioner Fox and I'm sure is aware, uh, we are working with the landscape architect to review the patio and see what we can do to make that more inviting and, uh, and engage, engaging and have more use. So that's you know, some of the things that we're doing with the facilities. For um, supporting community resiliency, we are radically redefining branch staffing to allow staff to meet the public where they are, and we're considering new and alternative positions and assignments. This also includes teleworking. So uh, we are, you know, in the middle of a joint staffing study with our union partner. Uh, we should be sending out the staff survey next week. We're also conducting a time use audit for staff, and this will enable staff to track the kinds of tasks that they regularly do. So we can see you know, where we need to either add additional staff or, um, or rearrange our staffing. I'm also gonna be contacting many libraries through, throughout California and the country to find some uh, models of organization to come up with a, a, a new kind of org chart. Under strengthening community partnerships and collaborative services, we are seeking out and expanding our partnerships with local governments. Um, our racial equity team is meeting with the City of Santa Rosa Department of Equity on a regular basis. We are attending brown bag lunches and learning from um, other organizations. Uh, we, uh, our communications manager, Ray Holly, is developing a master plan with, with his committee that will um, prepare, respond, that will help us prepare, respond, and recover from disasters in partnership with our local authorities. Under uh, fostering racial equity, social justice, and inclusion, uh, we are offering bilingual and culturally competent services and resources. We are recruiting Spanish speaking staff at all levels in every branch increasing staff development opportunities for all staff to build skills. Uh, we are negotiating a two-tiered bilingual pay system with our union for general customer service, as well as higher level translation and interpretation. And uh, we are also identifying race champions at the commission level. I believe uh, we have um, reached out and uh, Commissioner Mulford has agreed to be the liaison to our racial equity team. Under developing procedures to evaluate programs, marketing, collections, and policies, um, our, our uh, racial equity team has created an application for that committee. Uh, collection services has completed their diversity strategy and they have sent it to our racial equity team, our Latinx advocacy team, and our queer advocacy team for feedback. And once all that feedback is gathered, we will um, present it for full implementation. Um, and the racial equity team created an equity lens for all departments. Um, some of you may have been at our um, staff day. You were, uh, you know, you, you, you saw their presentation on the equity lens. And it really focuses on, it's a series of questions that we ask to determine the, um, the equity impacts of our decisions. And it helps us make uh, you know, decisions that will consider uh, unintended consequences and who will be disproportionately impacted by those decisions. And that's something that has been fairly recent and there's a lot of interest in this 
in the library. Um, lastly, we are um, hiring a diversity consultant to analyze the actions of the racial equity team, make recommendations and implement and budget for the recommendations using the racial equity lens. So I know that, uh, so our HR manager, Suzanne Silva is going to be working on that. Uh, she was at a conference recently that uh, will help her uh, you know, assess options so we can review potential candidates. So, you know, that's what we're doing now. Um, you know, I, I think we've made a good deal of progress so far and they will, there will be more to come. So, thank you. Any questions? Andy has a question. So this is Barbara. I put this down on my notes, but I might as well say it in public. I'm interested in the um, partnership activities with the JPA partners. And I think we need to think about roles of commissioners in that regard. It sounds, uh, you know, everything we're doing is great, but if we can expand that, include the commissioners in some, um, you know, appropriate roles, I, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Erica, um, this is Andy. Thanks very much. It's exciting to see uh, all of the uh, plans for year one. I had two questions. One, with regard to the Biblio bus, you indicated that it's currently uh, touring the branches, and I understand that you know there's a promotional aspect, but I'm wondering if you would talk a little bit about what the plans are when it actually deploys, about you know, where we're, we're planning to use it in the county and how. And the second question, I, I know you're only at an early stage in terms of redefining branch staffing. Uh, so I, I don't want to get out ahead, but I'm just wondering, because uh, this is not something I, I have any uh, a priori knowledge about, if you could just share perhaps uh, some examples of some of the things that might be discussed or that you've seen with other systems, just so I can start to get my head around it. Thank you. Sure. Um, so with the Bibliobus, uh, there is a there's a there's a there's a website there's a web page where um, both staff as well as community groups can request to have the Bibliobus at their event. And um, at this time, you know, we we haven't you know we will have to make some decisions about how to prioritize you know where uh, which events we're going to attend, and uh, you know we and we'll factor in considerations like you know how many people are expected to attend. Um, we had our first event was the Dia de los Muertos in the Healdsburg, and that was uh, co-sponsored with uh, Corazon in Healdsburg. So um, there is, you know, there is this uh, application, and I at this time I don't know, you know, what other events have been planned, but we do have a process for um, for deciding, you know, when and where to deploy that. Um, as for the branch staffing, um, we're looking at a variety of different models. Um, one thing that I think, you know, in, especially in our bilingual um, outreach is we're looking to possibly add some bilingual outreach staff who, you know, specifically um, are tasked with reaching out to the Latinx community. Um, we're also looking at um, our events. So right now, our events department, uh, that's Kathy DeWeese who manages that department. She is the bibliobus person, but she also is responsible for kind of system-wide programming. And so we're looking at adding um, additional staff to that. So we have a, an education initiatives coordinator, Rachel Ikaza, and um, we're looking at maybe adding somebody who could be like a teen services um, person who would coordinate uh, teen services for the, for the library. Because right now we just have a uh, combined, you know, children's and teen, and, and that was Kathy's previous position. We don't currently have an adult services coordinator. That's one of the positions that we are trying to figure out, you know, what do we want to do with that role? We definitely need, um, we need somebody in that. Um, our adult services department uh, needs a lot of support. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, that we would have a, an adult services coordinator, a teen services coordinator, a children's services coordinator overseen by, you know, uh, you know, a larger, uh, I don't know if it would be a division manager. We're kind of trying to figure all that out. 
Um, and so those are some of the things, you know, having bilingual outreach staff, possibly even uh, bilingual, um, somebody in marketing who could, you know, tr do translation and social media. Um, right now we have a translations team in the library, but it's about six people and they're all public, uh, they're all branch staff. And so their time is very um, limited because they're, you know, they're working in branches, having to do all their branch duties, as well as doing translations. So those are some of the things that we're looking at, um, you know, adding uh, possibly um, other staff for. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I, again, I'm not expecting to get, uh, you know, final, you know, final design, just the sense of what you were looking at. But I, I did want to go back to the uh, bibliobus for a second. I, it sounds like at the moment, it, it's, it's not like there's a regular schedule of where the bus will be when. It's really more ad hoc based on specific community requests. Am I understanding that? Um, yes. And right now, we do have two staff members, uh, Megan Bacchus and um, Monica Samantha Hernandez. Uh, but the expectation is like if a, if a branch requests the bibliobus for some event that's happening in their community, that the branch staff would provide additional support. So when we did the, um, the Dia de los Muertos event, we actually had staff from the entire library system, including um, Director Hammond and I and uh, Ray Holly. So we were there helping them uh, during that day because it, you know, it was a very, very busy event. I think we had about 1,500 people attend that day. So it, you know, we're, I think there probably will be, um, I mean, my bigger concern is there gonna be so much demand for it that we're not gonna have the capacity. So, um, you know, but we have to get the word out and let people know that it's available. And Andy, um, I put things I want to know more about. I put bibliobus detail and also um, the branch staff update and plans. So those two post-its are up. Great, thank you, Diane. Okay, and then if I could just interject, the, the one thing that was um, unique about the reimagining plan that Sonoma County was definitely in the forefront. I, um, I don't know how many of you remember SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Well, now what um, the plan is and what we did with Sonoma County was we used SOAR which is strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results. It's a much more specific planned out um, program. And you can tell by what Erica has just shared that there's actual results that can be reported on. So that structure has changed as well. So I just wanted to interject. And we also, just real quick, we, those came from Harwood, which you've heard about Aspen and a variety of other business models. So there were multiple um, processes that were pulled together to create SOAR. So, and- like, um, Commissioner Engbart, Lucas Andrews. You're on mute. Sorry about that. I have a question about the equity lens. Um, I know that we've there's been discussions about the expanded hours coming into play, and I'm wondering how the equity lens is being used in connection with developing those expanded hours. Sure. So, um, so the equity lens is really a series of questions that we ask ourselves to determine whether our decisions are gonna have negative impacts or unintended consequences on you know, communities of color. Um, and we talked about the hours. And one of the things that traditionally libraries do is they base their hours on circulation. So you know, uh, you know, smaller branches maybe don't have the same hours as bigger, more, busy, more busier branches. Um, but we decided that we, you know, we want to have equal number of hours at all of our branches with the exception of the two rural stations. Um, but it's really looking at what those hours are going to be. So currently we are Mondays and Tuesdays, we're 12 to 8. And we wanted to expand um, to have a 10 to 8. And then we're, you know, we're talking about which days of the week. 
So I asked the branch managers to talk to you know, their staff, um, try to get some feedback on which days would actually best suit their specific communities. Um, and we're kind of getting, we're coalescing around a Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, there are one or two branches who think uh, Wednesday, Thursday would be better, um, but it's mostly has to do with uh, scheduling as well as, you know, the, the days that we have more staff on the branches, Tuesdays and Thursdays tend to be better staff than Mondays. And that I think I understand this because historically the library was only open Tuesday through Saturday. So um, when you reopened and you expanded to Mondays, the staffing never really, you know, made it that um, that that far. So and it's also because um, one of our teen lab members actually gave some really great feedback. She says that the JCs their um, their advanced placement uh, classes are Tuesdays and Thursdays. So from their perspective, a Tuesday Wednesday night would enable. So I guess they do their classes Mondays and Wednesdays and then Tuesdays and Thursdays. And a Tuesday and Wednesday night would be better for them to you know, work on their homework assignments. Um, so that's one of the things, but we're also looking at the Sunday hours. Right now, we are just planning to expand in January um, the, to the two nights. But starting, I think, in the summer, we talked about expanding to Sundays. And we think that Sundays would be much more beneficial to our communities than adding additional nights. And it's because, you know, statistically, we look at our circulation and our door count numbers on nights, and we just are not getting a lot of people in the doors at night. But we know from Sundays at Central, that's a very, very busy day, and most families would more likely come to the library on a Sunday than they would at night. So that's kind of our, our equity lens you know, discussion of ours. Does that answer your question? Yes, I was just trying to get a, you know, an idea of how it was being um, implemented. And that that's, that's real helpful. Also, I just have a footnote to give is Sebastopol's had uh, teen members for even before the time I was on the uh, commission, but we currently have two. Oh, on the, on the lab? Yes. Are there any other questions? Oh. Yes. Um, this is Tom Hauser. You, uh, you talked about possibly getting another sorting machine at another location. And I'd like to have some, some understanding of the logic behind that. I thought the whole idea was we centralize and we sort everything and then it goes out. Um, and, and so could you explain that? Um, well, mostly it just has to do with um, the space that we currently have. So the sorting machine has a finite number of shoots that we can add to it because of the space. And so, for example, we are um, history and genealogy. We're creating a new location in our library catalog for history and genealogy. And in order for us to, you know, have that location, um, we have to, you know, change the, the way it's laid out in our warehouse. If we want to add book lockers or book kiosks or other kinds of alternative service locations in the county, they will also need their own chute. And we currently don't have the space to create other chutes. We just have the space for the, the locations that we currently have. Um, so that's one of them. But also, you know, the really high um, circulating branches, you know, if they have the space, like Rohnert Park is, is one. You know, if we have the space, then that is, you know, it, it kind of just streamlines our whole delivery, uh, shipping and delivery service. It makes it quicker and faster um, for, for, you know, those patrons getting those items. I don't understand how having two separate places that this is going to cir circulate through would streamline things. Well, so right now, like I said, it's really it's really about adding these other um, these other locations. So I understand you know, the shoot concept. There's a limitation, but I don't understand how it would the second part of your discussion. And maybe maybe this is something that we just need to discuss later on. I don't want to waste time on it. And mm -hmm. and just so you know, I did add sorting machine detail for things I want to learn more about, so that. If anybody has specific questions to that, 
you can shoot them to me and I'll add them in my report so that staff can look at them. Um, so we can move on. Erica, mm -hmm. did you want to share about the departments? Oh yeah. Um, uh, do you have the org chart? The org chart? Oh yeah. Okay. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we're organized. Um, as you see, uh, we have our uh, library commission, uh, Jen Swenson, who's our assistant to the commission, Director Hammond. And then underneath uh, Director Hammond is uh, the assistant to the library director, Jaylene Demapan. We have our chief financial officer that includes the budget and finance office. Uh, uh, our payroll office is also include, included human resources, uh, communications, our new fund development manager, Craig Palmer, and then me, the deputy director. I'm responsible for you know, probably three fourths of the library, um, including uh, public services, which is the largest department in the library that includes all of our branches, all of the branch staff, branch managers. Uh, public services also includes our events staff. So the bibliobus programming, our educational uh, uh, initiatives coordinator. Um, under collection services, that is all of our uh, collection development team, including our selectors who select materials for our branches, who select our um, e-media materials. That includes uh, cataloging, all of our cataloging, as well as um, some of our uh, pro book processing. Also in public services, we have, uh, we have our special libraries, including the history and genealogy, which is in central library and the archives. Um, under information technology, that's all of our IT staff, including our IT manager, Mike Daw, um, our website developer, um, all the staff who support our technology needs in the library, including you know, fixing, our, fixing our machines, installing new machines, uh, Mike is very, very um, heavily involved in this discussions about these alternative service um, uh, models, uh, the AMH. Um, he, he's also involved with our, both he and Jamie kind of share our ILS responsibilities, the horizon. Um, and then our facilities team, which includes not just the building mechanics, uh, it also includes shipping and delivery. So that's kind of you know uh, an overview of of our of our um, organization at this time. And you know when we are done with our staffing study and we are looking at uh, alternative models for how to organize, we we will probably have a new one. So I see Commissioner Hauser has his hand raised. Did you have a question? No, I I don't have a question. I tried to get okay. rid of it and, and now I've lost everything. Okay, we'll find you. So moving along, I'll just be super quick. I've included in the packet the uh, quick check library governance at a glance. And that's just to give an overview. It's a document that can be changed um, as things progress. The document can be moved around. It's more for your review. If you have any comments that you want, shoot them to me. I'm happy to look it over, modify the document. Um, I'll send Jen the word so that she can play with it. It just, it's handy to have so that people know the various roles. But again, it's very high level. It's not detailed. And I'm also making a lot of notes for questions. If I catch your question, I am putting it on the, the whiteboard as well. We'll be able to um, enable chat. We will be able to if you would like to end the meeting at a break and then we can enable the chat function and have everyone rejoin. Okay, so we were gonna have a break af after the next session when everybody, if we if we will take a break, 
we can come back and enable chat. So can we take a break now so that we can do that? Does anybody have any opposition to that? No, David has his hand up though. Okay, David. Yes, um, on page nine and 10 of the packet, the table, the chart for roles and key responsibilities. Um, the Santa Rosa Library Advisory Board was extremely interested in our meeting last week about the column titled Library Advisory Board, Absolutely. Governance, Policy, Community Relations, Finance, on and on. The problem has been that in the past three years that I've been on the commission, no lab has ever made a recommendation to the commission on anything. And that's their function under the Joint Powers Agreement. All of a sudden, you've given us key things that individual labs can actually do, including under finance, review local budget with staff to support needs. Uh, two questions. First, who drafted this? And second, would it be okay to circulate this to the various labs saying, see, here's what you can do. Uh, remember the labs are freestanding. We don't control what they do, but they would certainly love to get this as an official document. So my response, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Deborah, is this is a document that is sort of in process. It's a document that has been used in other areas that I've worked, it's been published. Um, but I think before that happens, there should be a conversation with the commissioners to fine tune this, because if it's not a task, it shouldn't be on the document. So it's one of those things, I'm giving you something to edit. Deborah? Yeah. Here. Do you, is that satisfactory to add it to the agenda building? I think so. I mean, the, and we can start talking about this uh, uh, certainly in depth at a different time, but this is, I think this is the um, kind of a generic description, as Diane said, of uh, roles and responsibilities, um, uh, you know, for various libraries, not just for ours. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm. I'm just very enthusiastic because as we all know, many labs are dying on the vine, can't get quorums, are inactive because they've never been told concrete things that they can do. So this may pump some life into them. And we have lots of hands up. So I tell you what, this is gonna be a robust conversation. Why don't we take that break and, um, and clarify your questions in your mind and then we'll come back to it, okay? Thank you. Okay, we got uh, we got Reese, we've got Andy, okay, and we've got uh, okay. 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 How long are we breaking for? Want to do ten minutes? Ten minutes. Ten. Thank you. Okay, so I'm I'm going to actually yeah I'm going to actually shut down the Zoom, and so everybody's going to have to get kicked off, and then you'll have to come and rejoin the Zoom. Okay, it's all the same information that you had before, but it's you're going to have to rejoin. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.